Welcome, future doctors, to another episode of the Future Minority Doctor Podcast with Dr. Sulma and Marina, where we bring you conversations to empower and inspire you to contribute to your community and the world by becoming a doctor. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Future Minority Doctor Podcast. Thanks so much for listening. Today, we are going to talk about some strategies for those of you who might be wanting to apply to medical school, but find yourself having a lower MCAT score. Now, what do we mean by a lower MCAT score, first of all? Lower MCAT score would be anything really under like 505, 500, especially when you're getting below 500. That's where you really need to strategize carefully because very few schools will even consider your application with a score less than 500. So let's just take a step back. Dr. Z, how did you feel when you were applying to medical school regarding your MCAT score? Okay, so let's go back to that point in my life. I knew just thinking about the MCAT and approaching it, it was going to be difficult because you hear about it, correct? The other thing too, just thinking back, so before I took it, I had applied to do this summer program where I went to New Jersey and it was a 10 week intensive MCAT program and it was geared toward minority students. So when I went to it, I think that was probably my first real feel of what the MCAT was going to be like. And part of that program too, we did practice MCATs and I wasn't performing so great. You know, when you search on the internet, what an average entrance exam or results should be, I wasn't scoring that. So that's where it was really difficult. And I think it was at that point that I, that I had to realize that when I got back to California, I really had to study like it was a full-time job because I didn't realize how difficult it was going to be. I managed through, to go through college working, working on my free time, whatever it might be. But I knew once the MCAT hit, I had to give it my all. <laughs> So I actually stopped working and paid for a course. And I I basically changed my perspective where prepping for the MCAT was like a job. Like I had to show up eight to five. I had to study. I would pack up my lunch and do a lot of practice. I still didn't do ideal, but I think I at least got enough score to get interviews. (laughs) Yeah. So, Uh but yeah, it's hard. It's very challenging. And that's what matters is like, I think a lot of students, they look at the MSAR, which is the medical school admissions requirements, or like the overview of average MCAT scores Mm -hmm. at a certain school. And they get discouraged because they see that, oh, this school's median is like 515 or 510 or 512. And a lot of them are up there. Mm -hmm. And so when you see those scores, it can be discouraging because students can think, oh, I would never get into the school because I have a 502 or a 505 or a 507, whatever it is. But you have to realize that that's just the average. It's just Mm -hmm. the median. That means that 50% of students were below that score Mm -hmm. and 50% were above that score. Now, maybe not very high above, but (laughs) above. And when you look at the MSAR, you can actually see what the 10th percentile is and the Mm -hmm. 90th percentile. And so for some of those schools, even if they have like a 512 or 515 average, if you look at the 10th percentile, it could be like a 505. And that Mm -hmm. means that even then 10% of students were below a 505 or Mm -hmm. at. And so just take that with a grain of salt. Don't let yourself be too discouraged. However, If you are one of those students who has a lower MCAT score, there are some strategies that you can employ in order to maximize your chances. So let's first talk about students who have a much lower MCAT score. We're talking in the 495 to 500 range. Why do I say 495 to 500? Because if you have less than a 495, please don't waste your money. Please don't apply to medical school because the chances of you getting in are so low that you're just wasting money. You're putting money down the drain. It's better that you save that money or devote that money that you saved towards an MCAT prep course or some sort of tutoring or something, maybe taking time off work so that you can really devote that time to your studying like Dr. Zulma did. She treated it like a full-time job and that's so, so important. 
especially if you're struggling, if you're someone who struggles with standardized test taking, you really need to like put in extra effort to do well enough. Now, does that mean that you have to get a 520? No, it just means that you have to get especially above that 500 that a lot of schools use. So if we're looking at someone who has a 495 to 500, in our application coaching program, what we advise is definitely apply to DO schools because mm -hmm. a lot of MD schools, there are only a handful of MD schools that will consider your application if you have less than a 500 MCAT. There are mm -hmm. a few, but there are not very many. So please, please don't limit your chances. Like don't just apply to UC Davis or Howard or Mahari. If you just apply to those schools, you're really taking a big risk. Now, does that mean that it never happens, that nobody ever applies to just two or three schools and gets in? No, I'm sure that there are exceptions, but there are exceptions, not the rule. <laughs> so if you're gonna go through the year long painful process of applying, please, please do whatever you can to maximize your chances. And applying to DO schools for a score of 495 to 500 is definitely something that you can do to maximize your chances of getting interviews, getting your application looked at, and of getting an admission. Anything to add, Dr. Z? No, I would, I would agree with that. Um, just really thinking about, just because it is expensive to apply. So sometimes we feel like we're in a rush we have to get there now. We have to get there now. And if you just step back and you think about a year in your life in history, it's really not a big deal if you just wait one more year as well. So I would strongly encourage you, if your score is not that great, think about retaking it. It's okay. And I would say most students retake it. <laughs> I mean, it's just, I just see that so often, and especially in our communities. Okay. A lot of students retake it. And that's okay. And then have a strategy. If it is more on the lower end, really think about where you're going to apply to. Sometimes too, it's reflecting about, you know, you sometimes have this image that this is how life is supposed to go and it doesn't. And that's okay. All right. Sometimes that, okay, you thought it was an MD school, but you know what? A DO school is just fine. I mean, Dr. Marina and I work with a ton of DO doctors and it's a, it's the same thing, guys. Yeah. So again, just really think about what your score is. Should I wait one more year? Should I retake it? Because in the grand scheme of things, one year is not a big deal to wait. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you're listening to this episode and you're a little confused about what a DO school is compared to an MD school, we encourage you to listen to our episode on DO programs specifically. And we also have some interviews with med mm -hmm. students who are in DO programs. And so I encourage you to listen to those as well to hear what their experience has been and whether that might be a right fit for you. Another thing that I'll say is if you are going to strategize and you feel like even though you have a lower MCAT score, it's worth it for you to go ahead and apply. Also consider studying to retake the MCAT because you don't want to find yourself in a situation where you apply and then you don't find out until May of next year that you didn't get into med school. And then you're scrambling to retake the MCAT. And of course, it takes at least a few months to prepare. So then you would already be submitting your application late for the next cycle. So if you are one of those who has a lower MCAT, I'm not saying you have to have to retake it, but seriously consider retaking it and figure out what's right for you. Because especially if you don't necessarily have a really strong application, because it's not just your MCAT that gets you into medical school. Mm -hmm. It's your application as a whole. So do you have a lot of volunteer hours? Do you have a lot of clinical experiences? Do you have at least a research experience? Are you very clear in your written application why you want to be a doctor? All of those things. So if you don't necessarily have the strongest application, you need to be working on strengthening those experiences, mm -hmm. but also perhaps retaking the MCAT might also give you a leg up if you do find yourself having to reapply next year. Oh, I, and I'm glad you brought up that point because I, I did have friends who scored better than I did, but they had a hard time. They had applied more than once to medical school because of the experience portion of it too. Mm -hmm. So there's different pieces to it. But of course, today we're focusing on the MCAT. 
but because it's something that a lot of minority students struggle with is that MCAT standardized test is so difficult, and especially when we were raised with different languages and so forth. So yeah, just really do take the time and really reflect. And if you're not sure, ask. It's always good to ask someone like what their thoughts are. Just like in my case, I probably was more on the left side of, I was on the left side of the ball curve for sure. <laughs> uh-huh. um, and I actually thought, I probably, if we were, we used to use a different scoring system, but I was probably within that 500 to 505, I think, if we were to translate the score. And I, I at that point thought, you know what, let me retry again. I was okay with the thought of having to take the MCAT again. But I did seek out my friend who was already in med school. And I kind of just went over and I said, I think I'm going to take it over. And she said, no, I think you're okay to try to go for it. And if you have to take it, you do. But go ahead and apply because you have strong experiences. So I might level it up as well. But again, don't go at it alone kind of to get some feedback, whether it's right for you, if it's the right time to apply or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and definitely get feedback from someone who is in medical school or someone Mm -hmm. who knows what they're talking about, at (laughs) least. Because, you know, family members and friends, they want to be cheerleaders. They want to just be encouraging, but they may not understand exactly what it takes to get into medical school. So definitely talk to people who know, (laughs) who who have information about this process. We've had some students who've had unfortunate experiences where they actually talk to their college counselors and they're not doctors are not physicians they didn't go to medical school and they get discouraged they said oh you'll never get in with that which is also not necessarily true (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely take all advice with a grain of salt and we always encourage you to kind of listen to your gut to Mm -hmm. to inform yourself as much as possible but then also listen to your gut because we do hear stories of either uh, both extremes like either Mm -hmm. people giving false encouragement and also people giving a lot of pessimism about chances Mm -hmm. of getting in and i can't i can't tell you how many people (laughs) have told me that someone told them that they should not pursue medical school. And that's really heartbreaking every time that we hear that because they did eventually make it. At least the people that we're talking to did. Mm -hmm. And someone else's opinion is just someone else's opinion, right? So anyway, let's talk a little bit about, so what if you have a 500 or higher score, but it's not really high. Like it's not a 510, it's not a 515, it's not close to the average score of the schools that you might want might be looking at or might be wanting to go to so in that case a lot of students approach me in our coaching program and they say i only have like a 503 or 505 should i retake the mcat what do i do and we talk about all these things that we're talking about in the episode already considering do schools looking at that 10th percentile, not just the average, and then applying to a lot of schools, right? So those would be sort of the main strategies for a lower MCAT score that's still 500 or above, is still consider DO schools because there are a lot of great DO schools. And like Dr. Z mentioned, you're going to get a lot of the same education. There are some slight differences, but you're still going to come out of it being a doctor and being able to take your board exams and practice medicine except for the most competitive specialties. So again, if you're confused about that, listen to our episode about DO programs. Next, consider applying to more schools. Please, please do not apply to only three, four or five schools, really anything less than 10 schools with a lower MCAT score. You're just shooting yourself in the foot. And I know that some students have said, well, I just don't really have the funds to apply to more schools well, then maybe it's not the right time to apply, right? Again, this is going to be a very individual decision and there are always exceptions, but be really careful because if you have a lower MCAT score and you can only afford to apply to five or eight schools, your chances are already slim and then they're going to get even slimmer. So really think about it. Is it worth going through this whole process, this whole painful process for a year Or should I just save up more money and wait until next year, continue strengthening my application, maybe take the MCAT if that feels right for you, and then apply to more like 15 to 20 schools. I recommend the average of about 20 schools if you have a lower MCAT score, because that's really going to maximize your chances of getting in. 
So those are some strategies for a lower MCAT. And the same thing applies as we talked about before. Consider whether retaking the MCAT is right for you. But if you are over a 500, it's less important. It's less critical to absolutely retake the MCAT. Like Dr. Z said, she got some great advice from someone who said, you know what, you don't really need to retake it. Just go ahead and shoot your shot. Just try and see what happens. Another thing I forgot to mention is that there are some schools that have conditional acceptance programs. And we have an episode about that that we did a few months ago. So you might consider looking at which programs have conditional acceptance programs. Those are programs where they say, hey, we really like this applicant. They have a lot of great life experiences and a lot of great clinical and volunteering experiences. We think they have a lot of promise, but we're not really sure if they academically are going to succeed if they just dive right into medical school. And so we're going to put them through a one-year program. They're going to take upper division science classes, or even sometimes they take med school classes and we're going to see how they do and if they do well then they get to enroll as a first year medical student the following year so that's another thing where if a school has those sorts of programs it might be a good idea to apply there because they might be more willing to consider even if you go don't go directly as an admission they might consider you for that kind of program Correct. And and the program that Dr. Marina just spoke about, I actually did. So there's very few schools that have it, but it's worth looking and applying to them because you have to apply to them. They interview you. And then after that is how they select which students they would want to put into this program to better prepare them academically. Mm-hmm. And again, I didn't start right away. It was a year program. So it was a year of looking back. Did that year of waiting make a difference? Not at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, and But it only better prepared me for medical school so I could, so yeah. that I was able to succeed. So it built a lot of confidence for me. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I think they're great programs. More and more schools are mm-hmm. developing them. I will say that they usually only have a very few slots. We're not talking about like 10 or 20 spots for these programs. They're typically like two to five spots. Mm -hmm. So they are also competitive and you have to have to have to be a great applicant overall. They're not just going to say, oh, this person has a low MCAT score. Let's just let them into this program. No, you have to show promise. You have to have an impressive application overall but just some sort of concern about academics to get into those programs. Yes, I would say impressive application and impressive interview as well. And then not tell us select. And the program I did, they only accepted four students each year. So as Dr. Marina said, it's usually a very small selected few. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of impressive applications, I'm going to mention this. I mentioned this in a lot of other episodes, including our episode on activity descriptions. Make sure you have 15 activities on the AMCAS, right? If it's DO, then it's easy to just basically use Essentially, you just have to edit the descriptions to be shorter, but you can use the same 15 experiences on your DO application. But I see a lot of students in our coaching program, they give me their first draft of their activities, and there's only like eight or 10. And I say, okay, we have to come up with more. There's probably stuff that you're not thinking about. Like, did you have any employment positions, even if it had nothing to do with medicine? Did you work as a waitress or as, you know, a tutor or as, you know, anything? And so people make the mistake of not maximizing the strength of their application by using all of those 15 activities. In that activities episode, I mentioned sometimes you can get away with 12. 12 is the minimum. If you have less than 12 activities, though, in my opinion and my experience being on an admissions committee, you will not be looked at. You will not be considered nearly as strong as other people who pretty much all have 15 activities. So that's one of the things we mean by make sure you have a strong application. And then those 15 activities, they have to be substantial, (laughs) like except for maybe like you're allowed to include like one or two hobbies on there, which can be things like, oh, I like to run or I like art or something like that. Just it gives you a, a dimension of your personality. But all those other activities, they have to be substantial. It can't just be like, oh, I volunteered at the animal shelter for six hours. Like, that's not strong enough 
for an activity. It has to be something that was like some sort of consistent effort in one particular domain. Now I did have a student that I was working with recently and she had like a bunch of different volunteer experiences, but they weren't necessarily like unified they, because they weren't all at one place. And I said, well, just put that in a separate activity by itself. It says um, miscellaneous volunteering. And then she was able to list all of those separate activities and it accumulated to like 50 or 60 hours. So that's a substantial activity. Don't write 10 hours of tutoring. If you have 30 or 50 hours of tutoring, that's a good activity. So that's kind of what we mean by a strong application. In addition, your personal statement has to be strong. It has to really clearly present and tell the story of why you want to be a doctor. I've read a lot of personal statements and it's, it's a hard essay to write because it has to tell your story. It has to be clear about your why and it has to leave the reader with a very clear understanding and no questions. <laughs> and so I read a lot of rough drafts where people try to get creative or they try to tell a story, but they've heard, oh, I'm supposed to tell a story. So they tell a story, but then I read it and I'm like, wait, this is a cool story, but what does it have to do with why you want to be a doctor? <laughs> right. And so a lot of it is mm -hmm. just wrapping it all together and making it really nice and crisp and clean and clear. And that's where our application coaching program comes in because we help with all of that editing and all that support to make sure that students have the strongest application possible. If you have not heard about our application coaching program, check out our website. The application opens around February of each year and it's a year long program that supports you through the whole year long process of applying to medical school. Anything to add Dr. Z? No, I think you've said it great. Check out our previous episodes. We break down everything that we touched on today, but in a lot more detail. So if, you know, you did great on the MCAT and your activities is your weak point, go listen to that episode. If you are doing great with activities, but your MCAT is your weak point, we have a bunch of MCAT episodes as well. So pick and choose so that way you can strengthen your application because many of you have the potential to get in. It's just, we have to put it together nicely. So then that way, whoever is reading it really, really wants you at their school. Absolutely. All right. So just one more note to add, if you are someone who has a, a better MCAT score, a really like 505 or higher, or maybe in the five teens, and you did not get into medical school, that's another opportunity to mm -hmm. join our coaching program because we do help people who are reapplying and help you figure out, okay, what is it about my application that caused me to not get in last mm -hmm. year and how can I strengthen that? And that's, it's the same principles all over again, right? The MCAT is not the only thing that gets you into medical school. It's important, but it's not the only thing. So really the strength of your application as a whole and the quality of your writing and your presentation are really, really important. So thanks so much for listening. I hope that you found this helpful. And until next time. Peace and love, everyone.